Having successful QSOs is more of an art than an exact science. If you get it wrong, people simply won't bother to talk to you on the air, so it pays to put some effort into it. I'm not talking about rubber stamp style QSOs, where you just exchange five and nine reports. I'm talking about real conversations, in particular on repeaters. I've been listening to repeaters for 47 years, and one of the most cringeworthy things I hear is new, and some not so new, licensees' attempts at a QSO. This seems to be a modern phenomenon, most likely exacerbated by the Foundation license. Back in the day, it took a fair while to obtain an amateur radio license. This gave prospective amateurs plenty of time to listen to the airwaves. So they learned the amateur lingo, and they learned how to have proper QSOs before they ever got a license. It became second nature, like walking. You didn't have to think about it. But now it seems that many people get the foundation license first, and only afterwards do they bother getting a radio. So when they first appear on a repeater, they haven't a clue. They haven't been taught amateur radio etiquette, and they haven't listened long enough to absorb it. Everybody's first time on the air is scary, and people will make mistakes, and often they'll freeze, like rabbits in headlights. So one thing I always recommend to new amateurs is a crib sheet. This should typically contain the sort of information that your QSO partners would find useful or interesting. For example, your call sign, your name, signal report, your age, your location, the weather, the type of rig or antenna you're using, how long you've been licensed, your special interests, other hobbies, your type of work, any clubs you might belong to or any other amateurs you might know. That's by no means an exhaustive list, nor is it set in stone, so you can tailor it for yourself. Then if you get stuck, just pick a topic off your crib sheet. This suggestion doesn't always go down well, because newbies know better than us old timers, don't they? I've been informed by certain newbies that they are perfectly capable of holding a conversation without a crib sheet, yet my ears seem to disagree with that. So unless you're capable of talking coherently for at least a minute, without hesitation, repetition or worthless padding, my first piece of advice would be to make yourself a crib sheet. A common mistake with newbies and the mic shy is to hold the microphone too far away and mumble meekly as if they don't want their mistakes to be heard. Communication equipment, especially Chinese handhelds, needs to be close talked, otherwise the audio sounds thin and weedy and it may be lost in the background noise. And remember, even if you're a strong signal into the repeater, the other person might be in a noisy environment, so speak up. But don't eat the microphone either. Hold it an inch from your mouth and talk across it to avoid popping. Don't mumble. Speak clearly and precisely. It's a radio channel with limited bandwidth, so it might not be very clear. If the other person is old, slow down and be patient. Don't gabble your call sign or name. Call signs are the most important part of the contact. You can't relax into the QSO unless you're clear who you're talking to. If you're asked to repeat something, spell it out clearly. Don't just repeat it in the same way as before, because the chances are it will be just as garbled the second time. It might be an unfamiliar word or phrase that's causing the problem, so use phonetics where necessary, or try and explain it another way. If the other person can't understand you, he'll soon give up. Pay attention, and if possible, take notes, so that you don't keep forgetting what the other person has just told you. If you're asked a question, jot it down, 
so that you remember to answer it, because your mind is likely to go blank when it's your turn, or you'll go off on a tangent. An extreme example of this is where there are effectively two independent monologues with neither person answering each other. So please listen carefully and respond where necessary. Adjust the length of your overs to keep the conversation balanced. If the other person invests time in a long over, don't just give a one word answer. The other person may need time to get his breath, slurp his coffee and collect his thoughts. So talk for more than a few seconds. Your over must contain information, not just call signs and fluff. Don't just reflect back what the other person says. Well, Joe, that's wonderful, back to you. Or, it's really great to make contact with you over. That's just fluff, like a web page that's all style and no real content. Fluff is a sure fire conversation killer. For pity's sake, say something interesting. If all else fails, ask questions rather than resort to fluff. And if somebody asks you a question, try to give more than a yes or no answer. For example, if somebody asks you where you are, don't just say, Selly Oak, back to you. Say, on the north side of Selly Oak, near Birmingham University, not far from the River Ray, but on a high, bit of a high spot, so I can see for miles from here. Now that's far more interesting. A QSO should be a balanced exchange of information. You should both come away feeling that you have gained something from the experience. You should know more about each other than when you started. As to what happens at the end of your over, that's a typical example of art versus science. There's no strict formula. Whatever you do, don't just abruptly stop talking, because we'll never know if you reach the end of your over, or if your battery's gone flat, or your fingers slipped off the PTT, or you've been hit by a car, or there's a glitch in the internet linking. You must somehow make it clear that you have reached the end of your over. Unless it's a quick fire exchange, use over to indicate that you've finished. Please don't say back to you or worse still, microphone back to you. If it's a long over, or if you haven't identified for a while, you could give your call sign instead of over, but don't fall into the trap of giving your call sign at the beginning and end of short overs. That becomes tedious very quickly. If there are more than two people in the QSO, pass it to a specific person and make it clear who you are passing it to. For example, G9XYZ from M9ABC. Don't be a know-all. You don't know it all and you never will. As they say, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. You're not aware of the depths of your inexperience. Respect the experience of your elders and if they offer you advice, accept it graciously. Don't be sneering or condescending. It makes me smile when such people complain that no one ever answers their CQ calls. Is it any wonder we soon learn who to avoid? Don't dominate the conversation. You might love the sound of your own voice and think you're a great orator. If that's the case, the chances are that you're very boring to listen to. It won't be long before no one talks to you. Don't drink and QSO. You might think that you are eloquent, but in reality you are boring, repetitive, embarrassing and downright tedious to listen to. And related to that, don't keep repeating yourself. Repetition does not magically create content. If what you said was pointless the first time, it'll be just as pointless the umpteenth time. Even if it was interesting the first time, it'll soon become boring with repetition. Ask yourself, did my last over impart any useful information? Did it actually serve a purpose? Did I fully answer a question? Did I express an opinion? 
Did I ask a question? Did I make somebody laugh or think? If not, you're not having a good QSO. Ooh, don't you CB lingo. If you don't know the equivalent ham language, just use plain language. CB lingo puts people's backs up, not because they're anti-CB, but because the lingo is inappropriate. Its original purpose was to be radical and anti-establishment, and that's okay in the context of CB, but not on ham radio. I mean, what's your 20? Why not just say, where are you? And what's your personal? It's only understood by CBers, whereas what is your name? Is universally understood. Yes, ham radio has its own lingo, such as QSO and QTH, but these are abbreviations of a universally understood code which facilitate communication across language barriers. You don't have to use them. Don't speak and compute. If you're viewing websites or trying to do something on a computer at the same time, you're not paying fully attention to the conversation and it shows. It's downright rude. Don't have Google QSOs. If you don't know something or you don't have an opinion on a particular topic, just be honest and admit it. There's no shame in it. Don't use Google and then pretend you're an expert. We can see straight through that. And try and keep some sort of log or notes so that if you speak to the same person again, you'll remember something about your previous QSO. This sort of continuity is far more friendly than starting all over again with each QSO as if you'd never heard the person before. And lastly, above all, don't give up. Analyse your own performance, learn from your mistakes and try to do it better next time. No one's born with a QSO skill. They have to be learned and practised and honed. Bye!